。德国乐迷写了半年多，他们还有好多话想说，说说他们自己喜欢的。Hi! Wow! There's, hey. a, there's a flower. Nice. Maybe this one is too much. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, this It's is perfect. 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 Full of hell. Wow! Your your home looks so nice, and our home looks also <laughs> also nice. <laughs> Not much progress. Yeah. <laughs> no progress at all. We were really busy. Yo, yo, Julian. Hello. Hello. By the way, Li, I really like your hair. Why?、It's、really. <laughs> It's a nice wave.、Mm, yeah. I did it for him today. Special hair do. Yeah, because you think my hairline is going up and up.、Mm. Mm. If he always do do this too much, maybe this part will just go up. I think. Yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah, just, just. You you can't even see where they end. <laughs> <laughs> also, we all get older, and signs of that are not、uh, not something to be ashamed of. Yeah, yeah I think so too. No, of course. Hi, 大家好，我是表情银行的思雨。Hey, 大家好，我是表情银行的彤彤。Hey, I'm Yu Yang. Hi, I'm Max. So great to see you guys. And today our、uh, topic is, what's our topic? The saddest song in the world. Saddest song in the world. <laughs> Can anyone tell me why why we choose this weird topic? <laughs> Sad songs are just the best songs. Oh, <laughs> it was also something every one of us had something to say about immediately.、Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And why sad songs is you you can talk more than happy songs. I think what makes you happy is more individual.、Mm. Like what makes you happy can be very different from person to person. But usually, what makes you sad is pretty similar. Ah.、Oh. And I feel also that I kind of use sad music, also like aggressive music, because I'm I'm very rarely sad and I'm very rarely aggressive. But I use this music to kind of revisit those emotions, right? To feel kind of a bit、mm -hmm. of those emotions that I don't usually have. So it's kind of a, a journey for me into like an emotional world. Mm. Also practice.、Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let's introduce our first song. Max, okay, Max starts start. first. Can you can you tell us、uh, some basic information about your song?、Um, yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where to start. I think、yeah. it's objectively the saddest song in the world.、Um, it's the song "Seaweed" by、mm. a, a band. It's a band. Called Mount Erie, but it's actually only one person. I think、yeah. sometimes he plays with other people for some records, but especially in this record, he's only himself、uh, playing all the instruments.、Mm -hmm. There's not a, a lot of instrumentation. It's it's very, very lyrical and very sad. <laughs> okay. I would say the music is kind of experimental folk.、Mm. He's not very focused on. Specific style or genres.、Mm. I think music is for him very much a tool to express his emotions and and、uh, what he's doing in life. I guess. Okay. Next question is、uh, your first impression to listen to this saddest song. I guess you can could listen to that song or that record as a whole and already feel pretty sad because the whole the whole feeling is extremely. Devastating and sad, but then if you know the backstory, then it's like game over. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, and it's not funny. It's I shouldn't laugh about it. But the story for the record is basically that、uh, his wife died of cancer、mm -hmm. uh, shortly after their daughter was born, and he recorded the full record in the room where she died days after the death.、Mm, yeah. So. This song, the first line of the song is, "Our daughter is one and a half. You have been dead eleven days." Our daughter is one and a half. You have been dead eleven days. 
and it's actually that he actually recorded that song 11 days later in the same room because he kind of needed this devastating soul crushing thing and in this sense the whole record basically it doesn't really matter which song you pick every song is like that and this it could be one song every song is now it's one month later and I feel like this. Now it's two months later and I feel like this. It's like mm -hmm. a diary of how he yes. deals with mm -hmm. the emotion of the death. This record and this song, I kind of I kinda of like this song the most. I don't know I don't really know why, but it's so it's so tragic but also kind of beautiful in the sound. Mm -hmm. Um this album is really, really the only album where I really have to sit and decide, do I want to listen to this record? Mm, Can right. I now bear Same. those emotions? Same. And I really rarely do. I mean, I listen to a lot of sad music, but generally I can just start it and listen to it. And it doesn't affect me like so fundamentally that mm -hmm. I really have to decide, do I want to listen to that now? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I can I can get out of bed and listen to some black metal record in the morning. And mm -hmm. say, yeah, that's but this record, <clears throat> I really have to decide, and I really rarely listen to it because I know I will actually be really sad after yeah. I listen to yes, it. Yes, yes. Yeah. I actually I just listened to it once. I don't dare to do it again. I'm not yeah. going to do it again. I think the arrangement is really really simple. Do you think it it helped uh, to express his emotions the best? Yeah, I mean, it's all, it's all connected, right? Because he is alone. He has a very simple studio setup in this room. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's basically guitar, very sparse guitar. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think there's some percussion coming in at some song, songs. Yes. Uh, but I think it's, it's mostly improvised. I think it's mostly accompanying the words. Maybe, maybe it, maybe it would make the, the, what chords he plays and so on, but I'm okay. pretty sure that he didn't think about yeah. what kind yes. of chord he's now playing. I think it just kind of came out of him. Some songs also kind of end in the middle, where I guess he doesn't want to say more at this point. Do you have some examples of uh, of the lyrical content? Which line do you think touched you the most? Touched you the most? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's in this song and it's the end. And I guess there's also kind of Maybe you could tell me later or some or mm. cut it in because the end chord in the song is so is so but it's, it's I guess what makes the song so special for me the end <clears throat> note. So he's he's telling how that he's uh, going to some place where they have been together. He bought a chair and her ashes, and then uh, he says. Um, I bought a chair from home, I'm leaving it on the hill, facing west and north, and I poured out your ashes on it. I guess so you can watch the sunset, but the truth is I don't think that the dust is you. You are the sunset. But the truth is I don't think of that dust as you. You are the sunset. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think that's yeah, so I remember beautiful. that, yes. Yeah, that, that's oh, a God. super yeah, beautiful. I get, I get just by saying it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. But he's like, the, set, the last sentence, so he says like, you are the sunset. Yeah. It's kind of, it goes up. Why would we choose this topic? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> like one word to that, uh, now what I said before, the, uh, the new record, the newer record, I think it's from 2020. Mm -hmm. It's with another woman and I think, um, I kind of, I don't know if it's even more sad or if it's kind of happy, okay. because, but I think he kind of met this other woman that he created the record with and kind of they together now go through this and they kind of find joy, but it's still sad because of course he's still involved, but he, she's kind of helping him. And mm. this record is also very, it's very nice with the story. Sad, of course, but I was kind of happy to, to hear it. Courageous as bone, lying down in a storm, steadfast newborn, a house with no door. Okay. Maybe we can go uh, to Yuya now because yeah. I think yeah, this I mean, song is I set also, in a different way. Yeah, yes. I also, 
I agree. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Yulian's turn now. You, Yulian, Yulian said his song. Can you tell us uh, yeah. some basic information first? Okay, so my song is from the record "Horses in the Sky" mm. by the Silver Mountain Memorial Orchestra and Tralala Band, yeah. which is a very cumbersome title. They're a Canadian band, and the record is pretty old. I think from 2005. Mm. It's the first record they did where they uh, featured lyrics on every song because it's, I think it's like six musicians on this record. They have a lot of changing members. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, so they have, they have sometimes six people singing at the same time, so it gets almost like a choral feeling. Mm. I think they have yeah. also band members from the band Godspeed You, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Mm. It's, it's basically the same band. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Second question is, is also what's your like first impression when you listen to this song? Yeah, I don't remember exactly when I heard the song for the first time because it's mm-hmm. so old. And I definitely remember that it made a first impression on me because I thought like, oh wow, this this is such a mood killer. Like mm. you you couldn't play this like in a room of people that are having fun and everyone would be like not noticing like if you would play it at a party, everyone would get like really quiet, and someone would say like, "Yeah, can you can you do can you play something else?" Okay. Mm. They put angels in the electric chair, the electric chair, the electric chair. I too could have chosen any song from this album, and I don't think I really listen to individual songs from the album. Like if I listen to them, I just put on the whole album. Mm. Mm-hmm. The songs themselves would make it on any playlist that has like other normal songs in it. Okay. <laughs> I've heard it described like this once, which I thought was very fitting. Like when you're in a very sad state, your baseline happiness is already unhappy. So if you if you have a bad day, you can't even look forward to like tomorrow you're having a good day because you will just return to your baseline happiness, which is already bad. And I think this record, like overall, accomplishes that really, really well. Especially the song that I chose, uh, "God Bless Her Dead Marines." Mm-hmm. I just chose it because it's the first time to be honest. But I think all of the songs really capture it very well. Mm-hmm. And I think the difference to Max song is that. This song is not about an individual. It's not about an individual problem or, or, or yeah. depression. It's a more global big theme, right? It's a b- big picture f- topic. Exactly. It's what I what I described, like, and what Max described also, um, can apply to just about any loss. Like, it mm. doesn't even have to be through death. It can be like losing a friendship or losing. Uh, marriage or something like that or a partnership. I mean generally it's also about anti-war and about mm-hmm. about yeah. war in general. I mean the, yeah. the record the song is called God Bless Our Dead Marines. It's kind of already this yeah. kind mm-hmm. of war-y mm-hmm. undertone. And, yes. it's, and, and, and it's, so in this way like this more global sadness. Yes, because it was made in the Bush era in the at the time when yeah. it, they sent a lot of soldiers to Iraq. I think there's something very specific about the singing mm-hmm. that is immediately yes. sad to me, yeah. mm-hmm. which is this like cracking of the voice, like you do when you're like uh, on the verge of crying. Like to me, the the singer always sounds a little bit like he's on the verge of crying. Mm. Yeah, to me too. And the instrumentation? Do you think the instrumentation uh, convey the feeling of sadness? Um, yeah, like uh, to me, this is like probably for like being socialized in a uh, European context, it just immediately evokes like uh, church feelings mm. because of yes. the choir, the singing. Mm. I once uh, saw that live actually in Berlin. When you saw a really good concert, you tend to always think, "Oh, this was the best concert I, I ever saw." Uh-huh. But still, like I, now, I think like six years later, I think it's still my favorite concert experience. Oh. It was so amazing. It was in a theater, so you had all the seats. We were sitting in the seat, and they were playing on the stage like in a big Berlin theater. Mm-hmm. 
and the, the sound was perfect you could sit in the chair and kind of just get the, the, the music it was so good it was such a great experience wow yeah okay i only saw uh, godspeed you here in beijing i think five years mm. ago good experience but not mm. One of my favorite concert. I also saw Godspeed, but and it was also like ah oh, great, but it was not close to that to mm. that experience. Yeah, I think the the singing is what really takes like Mount Zion apart from other post rock bands. I wouldn't even call them post rock to be honest. Yeah, I mean I they are, they're going a yeah. lot in this kind of up this this like wavy direction of, but still it's so it's such different. It's it's really difficult to give a genre okay should we move on to you yes basically. please please introduce your saddest song okay <laughs> my saddest song <laughs> of the world is nights that won't happen by the band purple mountains the frontman of this band is uh, david berman he's a very talented poet and uh, musician he had a band called Silver Juice, but it broke up 12 years ago. They were kind of a single songwriter, folk, rock sort of music. And also in this, this new project, Purple Mountains, David Berman also has a similar approach. I chose this song because it's super sad. It's super <laughs> depressing. The mood it sets up is melancholic, bittersweet. And after a short time of intro, he suddenly sings those words in a very narrator-like fashion. The dead know what they're doing when they leave this world behind. Mm -hmm. When the here and the hereafter momentarily aligned. The dead know what they're doing when they leave this world behind. When the here and the hereafter momentarily aligned. Another so sentence is like all the suffering gets done by the ones we leave behind it's also a line that hit me pretty hard like realizing that the dead they are not suffering you know the people that are left behind are do all the suffering actually it's connected to mount eerie mount eerie is the one who's suffering it's yes kind of, yes. Yeah. yes the song is sad but after i heard the song i had to do my research i had to figure out who is david berman I, saw the Wikipedia article and uh, I said, huh? Okay, he's dead, but this album was just recently released. How can it be? Yeah, he, he died. He died one month after the release of this album. Which is, suicide. Um, yeah, and it was suicide. suicide. Mm -hmm. It gave this song a complete, completely different meaning. Yeah. I, I watched an interview with him where he was still alive and he told the interviewer that this song is actually about his mom and other friends that he has lost. lost. This song is related, I assume, to uh, the loss of your mother on some level. Yeah, yeah. her and, and a couple friends. It seems to me that this song is for us, for us still here. Yeah, I mean, it's a negative, it's a, it's a burn the bridges type sort of song, but... And there's probably some anger in, to, in it too, thinking about what won't happen because you're not together with someone, because they're dead or because you're separated. After knowing the fact that he died, it gave me the impression that this is more of a farewell letter to everyone. Like, it was something that he was longing for. You know, this album for me is not sad mm -hmm. because he's, he has this attitude, he kind of accepts death. He's mm -hmm. kind of ready. He's okay with that. He, he still kind of get the sense of humor. Yes, so, he's actually comforting us not to yeah. really uh, care so much about the dead ones because they are dead. It's, it's fine for them. When I see his lyrics, it's kind of, suffering. okay, death is not that terrible anymore. Of course, mm. it's sad, but it's, it's also comforting. Yeah. 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 I think this is a good balance to strike. And I think like a really good sad song strikes this balance. Like I said, death and loss is universal, mm -hmm. but it's also inevitable. Mm -hmm. Like it's so universal because it happens sooner or later to everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you have to deal with it at some point. 
person from Mount Erie said, it's like, you don't want to learn anything from the experience itself. Yeah. Because you don't want to have to endure the loss that is actually involved with yeah. learning about this experience. So music and music from other people gives you this outlet of going through the experiences without uh, the loss associated with it and actually being able to learn from it. But in that sense, I would say it's practice. Like listening to sad music is practicing for the inevitability of loss in your life. Yeah. Mm. Like uh, Max practi uh, practicing his tongue for, for spicy food. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And his asshole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Because in Western society, but also in Chinese society, it's also not common to talk about death. No, not so it's much. not common. Uh, and we try to avoid it, but I think confronting death is very helpful. And also the other songs in, in, on the albums are very depressing, very sad, but he has a nice packaging of, of those lyrical content. He uses his arrangement uh, mm. to, to make it more jolly, more funny. I mean, I think it just makes a lot of sense, right? If you, if you think about that record as kind of a goodbye letter, as kind of an explanation and something to leave behind, mm -hmm. then it makes sense that it's also uplifting, it's also jolly and also helpful to those people. Yes, and yes. if you contrast that to Mon Erie, who created this song as an outlet to his emotions, mm -hmm. not for everyone, but just for him, yeah. then it makes sense that this this album has no packaging whatsoever. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's just like sad emotions in a box. I have a good honorable art of mention music. in this context. Oh, yeah. One of my honorable mentions would be uh, Max Richter on The Nature oh. of ah. Daylight. I love that so much. I associate it very much with the film Arrival mm -hmm. and so I associate it with, it with this concept of like loss as an inevitability and embracing it so I think like even if it's even if it's not talked about as a lot in like whatever society here it isn't either it, it's still something that even different cultures can relate to each other in very easy and direct way yeah I also have an honorable mention. Yeah. Black Star. On the day of execution, only women need them smile. And the whole album is sort of like a letter, letter or epitaph uh, for the people to 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 listen to when he's not around anymore. Yeah. Yeah. But do we do uh, honorable mentions? Yes, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. The verse is kind of the same as Mount Erie in a way. It's uh, uh, the record Stage 4 by Touche, Touche Amour. Oh. Mm. It's, a, like a, it's a hardcore band French. and they have been quite, I think, quite successful before that. But that whole record is about the death of the mother of the singer who died of cancer. Mm -hmm. And I think in the first song he talks about how she left a voicemail on the on the telephone that he was always too afraid to listen to. Mm. And then in the end of the song there's the actual voicemail <laughs> of his mother, the oh. last thing that she did to him. Hi Jeremy, I just wanted to tell you that just finally left the hospital. Um, and we're gonna drop off a prescription at CBS, so I probably won't be home when you get there. Okay? Bye bye. Uh, my other horror mention would be Sun Kill Moon. He's like an experimental singer songwriter, and it's just, he's just so melancholic. Even though he's not always singing about sad, sad things, mm. he has like 10 minute songs where he's just like going from one place to another, telling different stories from his mm. past, but also from what happens in the world. One song, especially uh, God Bless Ohio, this time. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. So, oh, it's so melancholic and I just love it. It's so, it's so bittersweet. It's not like so crushingly sad, it's just bittersweet. I like bittersweet. There you were a little kid in the yard. I was a friend and a brother. There's an old 
picture of us playing cards in the night with the porn at houses. Good. Okay, Julian? Julian? Uh, yeah, my other honorable mention would be the whole record Mongrel by another purpose like usual. Oh, uh, okay. It's musically not depressing it's or sad. It's not sad musically, but I think it, it goes in a similar direction to uh, Purple Mountains when it comes to the intent. Because it is from the perspective of, in my opinion, a person who is very close to killing themselves. The singer from uh, number 12 is very depressed a lot of the times, and especially the time when he, uh, when, when they wrote that record, he was like very, very depressed. Oh man, now and I feel now I feel really bad for not supporting their latest project. <laughs> 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 oh man. Okay, uh, my honorable mention uh, would be Clavel. Ah. I, think, I think the Clavel piano concerto that I also mentioned actually <laughs> in uh, Dur May one yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. I think it's the G major piano concerto, the second movement, mm. the adagio movement, the slow one. It kind of reminds me of someone coming out of depression. Oh, now we have a like different direction. <laughs> we had depression, but he's slowly, slowly, slowly coming out of it. And the music kind of represents that to me. Although, of, of course, music is abstract, but I like to think of, think of it that way. That would be uh, my first pick. And the second pick would be Radiohead Daydreaming. Mm, of course. Uh, song that you can't disconnect with the background story of Tom York. Like the whole album, The Moon Shaped Pool, is very, pretty very much, personal. very personal, yeah. very autobiographical. Yes. And the, the song Daydreaming has also like a sample. If you reverse the sample, it says half of my life. referring to to his wife with this sentence mm -hmm. shortly wow. after the release of the album she died of cancer mm. another really heartbreaking story and really tough to digest oh wait one honorable mention i ah, thought okay. would bring it up that's why i didn't have it on my list caretaker oh yes Yeah, but Character Taker is such a big topic and big album. I mean, it's not even one song, it's six albums. Um. And it's, it's, it's not even one album, it's yeah. like the whole discography. Yes. Yeah. And it deals with another topic that we actually didn't mention in, uh, like in this episode. It deals, deals with... The loss of your mind. Yeah. yeah. Dementia. Mm. It's also, maybe... also loss. And it's also death in a way. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I guess everything is dead. <laughs> yeah. In a way. Everything's dead. <laughs> Super serious yes. topic, uh, and we probably need to talk about it in another episode. Really. Another saddest music episode? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's just honorable mentions. That's the point about honorable mentions, right? You don't talk about them that much. I mean, it also has ever. all the things that we uh, listed. It has like the ups and downs, it has the general sad tone. It has the uh, personal connection. It, it's the it's an absolute mood killer. You can't play it at a party. <laughs> it has all those things. Yeah. And also, I think I think you can say 
it's not really music in the same way, right? <laughs> it's not it's not really something that you can actually really put on and listen to. One because yeah, it's the just least too entertaining. Long. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. I don't think it's the least entertaining album. I think the later albums of this whole discography is hard to listen as a music, but the first two albums are actually pretty nice, you know, to listen to it. They're just there to set you up, right? They're, they're not, it's a, it's a trick. It's a false sense of security. They're just there you, to pull you down from it afterwards. I mean, I can't, I can't really listen to the first two albums as like nothing, something else than sad music because I know what's coming. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we, we talk to the audience a little bit mm -hmm. because we have already talked about so many sad songs and mm -hmm. which song do you think is the saddest? Mm. Right? Yes. Me? Or, no, 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 I no, mean... The audience. The, no, the audience. The audience, <laughs> yeah. You can, you can tell us on them. <laughs> and what's your personal saddest song? Yeah, I would like to hear your set of song. Maybe it's Eric Clapton. I don't know. Tears or in Heaven. Tears in Heaven. It's also pretty sad. It's really sad. Yeah. Great, great, great. I think it's a great episode. Yeah. Maybe next time don't don't set don't do such a sad topic okay. again, yeah. right? Okay. I think we happy, will. positive. Let's, let's okay, do it. sure. Okay, okay. Okay. I will say goodbye to everyone. Mm -hmm. See you bye next bye. time. Bye bye. bye, -bye. See you next time. See you next time.